Hey, this is Vaughn Vernon. Welcome to my Design Accelerator tutorials. It's brought to you by my company, Kalele. You can find us on the web at kalele.io, and you can learn about my most popular workshop, the IDDD workshop. Of course, you can also contact me for engagement in consulting, project work, product work, whatever you happen to need help with, with domain-driven design and software architecture. Today I'm going to be talking about the vertical slice architecture, or what? Is that an interesting question to you? Let's dive in. First of all, what is the vertical slice architecture? Well, let me explain it this way. If you have a layers architecture, just a typical layers architecture, say at this level that the user interacts with, this is an endpoint, a controller, rest endpoint, even a messaging endpoint. And this endpoint interacts with an application service. The application service receives control. It manages a use case and it involves the domain model and the domain model performs the business operations, the business logic, and modifies some data or creates some data. And then the infrastructure gets involved in persistence, for example, or sending messages or both. So that's just a basic layers architecture. Where do we go from here? Now, the first time you look at this and you hear the name vertical slice, you're probably thinking, wow, this is clearly a vertical slice through the architecture. It's a slice that handles a single use case. And visually, you would not be wrong, but according to the pattern, that is incorrect. So what's vertical slice after all? Before I get into that though, let's go back a ways. I'm thinking probably 25 years or so to an architecture approach or an architecture pattern that was referred to as a steel thread. And basically what you see here is this slice or thread through the architecture is known as a steel thread. So this is a steel thread architecture. The point of the steel means that it's strong. It is important to the architecture. It is important to the application or the service. Therefore it is steel and the thread is a matter of the thread that goes through the architecture. I like to think of this as steel thread. And frankly, when I first heard of the vertical slice architecture, I thought it must be the same thing as steel thread, but it's not. Now, the basic idea of the vertical slice architecture is to take each of the components in each of the layers in the steel thread architecture and to move those into a single module, which in Java would be a package or in c .net, a namespace. So we're going to have a single package or a sing single namespace a module that will have the endpoint, the application service, the model, and the infrastructure. In fact, anything that you need for that particular use case or set of use cases should belong in a single module. It could be that you want to have a different module for every single use case. It could be that you could have a single module for all the use cases of a given feature. I think this is a choice that you can make. Some may or may not agree with me about that, but I have a point to make concerning this. First of all, if I had had some input on the name of this architecture, I probably would have requested something like feature modules. To me, it's more about modularity and keeping a set of components that contribute to a single use case or a single feature in just one place. In this case, notice, logically, there are sort of layers, at least the direction of the dependencies 
On the other hand, though, there are no real layers. It is just one module that holds this. One of the downsides to this approach is that you may need to or like to reuse certain parts of a single module in other modules. Now, this architecture does not prevent you from doing that. You can reuse some components, but the basic idea is that every single use case or set of use cases could be managed inside a single module. So I like the name feature modules for that reason. There's another aspect to this though. This could be part of a plugin architecture. That is, a module could be a plugin. Now today, a lot of features could be implemented as plugins. That's because a lot of what we do is experimental. We may A-B test some new feature or set of use cases, and if those have a good impact on the consumer, on the customer, the, the users, well, we could retain that module plugin as part of the overall application or service. On the other hand, if it doesn't do well, we can simply unplug that module and we have a nice neat little package here or container to just pop in or plug in and unplug depending on the success or failure or mediocrity of a given feature set. Now, one way to accomplish this is to have sub-modules. That is, you could have an outer plugin module and that plugin module could hold multiple individual use case modules and that way you're keeping each of the use cases of a given feature or a set of functionality in just one place. That way you could trade out use case modules inside a plugin module and this could be a way to distribute your software more efficiently in order to A-B test or whatever approach you like to take with experimentation to see if users consume this as you expected to or if it doesn't make the impact that the business was looking for, you can simply unplug it. This gives you an idea of what I'm referring to as a feature plugin, where each of the use cases that are supported within a feature could be in their own module. So use case A, use case B, use case C. The entire feature plugin could be unplugged, or you could remove any of the given use cases from the feature, replace them, whatever your research and experimentation and feedback results in, you can adapt accordingly. You can find more information about the plugin architecture or architecture pattern in Martin Fowler's book, Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture. An idea for how to actually accomplish this is you could have a feature plugin and the feature plugin has a factory method named module, which would return a feature module. And you could plug in and unplug the feature plugin as needed. Further, once you get a feature module, you can ask for the use case endpoint for a given use case. And this would sort of be the linchpin for how a user talks to the use case. And you could start and stop this. It could be that the endpoint should be an endpoints. You may have to provide a number of endpoints and a way to match on a given endpoint based on the user's request. So this is just an idea of how the feature plugin and each of the modules of the feature could work. This week I've been teaching my ITDD workshop. We've completed three out of four days. We finish tomorrow with our fourth day. It's been a success and I look forward to meeting some of you in the future. I hope that you've enjoyed this week's Design Accelerator tutorial. Please remember to like this particular tutorial video and subscribe to my channel. It helps a lot. I really appreciate it. Look forward to the next time. Until then, take care.